So we have an age-old question. How do we paint a black dog without using black paint? And I'm going to show you how I would do that with watercolors. I'm going to use any color but black. I started out by sketching out our two dogs. One dog is still with us. She's about 13. And the other dog, he passed away a couple years ago. Um, so I'm going to paint them because I realize I haven't really painted them very much. So no time like the present to paint them. So I'm going to first get my paints activated, some water, because watercolors, you just add water and it works again. Use a spray bottle to reactivate it. You can use a thirsty paintbrush. So a paintbrush that holds a good, healthy amount of water. And then we can start mixing colors and painting. I got my ultramarine blue, which is my go-to dark, rich blue. It's one of my favorite blues. I'm gonna get some of that over into one of my mixing tray areas on my palette. If you want a palette like this of your own, this is made of porcelain. It is wonderful for doing big washes. A little palette wallet like this with pans and put your paints in it. And then I mix all my colors in this. You can check them out on my Amazon storefront. And when you purchase through my links, I get a little bit of um, money back. It doesn't cost you anything, but I get a little bit, which helps me uh, buy more art supplies. And then I have a quinacridone rose. You're like, um, Elizabeth, those aren't anywhere near black. Well, just hold on and I will show you what I do. And if you're more interested in the paints that I use, I am an affiliate for Jackson's Art Supplies. They are based out of the UK, but even if you live in the US, you can still purchase through them. Actually, let's do this turquoise. It's beautiful turquoise. Get some cerulean blue. Another one of my favorite go-to blues. So watercolors, the less water you have with the watercolor paint, the more vibrant or darker the color will be. The more water you add, the lighter it will be. It'll just be, you know, watering it down. You'll notice that the paint consistency, it's not goopy like a creamy peanut butter or even acrylic paint. It's watered down. So we got some of this and that. I'm going to take some of this Quinactum Rose and then this Cerulean Blue. Check out that beautiful purple just mixed. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I'm also grabbing some of my burnt sienna. When I make my own black color from 
no black paint. I use my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna, and that can make wonderful dark colors. So I'm gonna make that right here. Grab some of my burnt sienna. It's more. Grab some of my ultramarine blue. And I've realized it's still a little bit too brown. I just add more of the blue. Mixing colors is just back and forth. Like, okay, how does that color look? Okay, that's too blue. Add more brown. Oh, now it's too brown, so add more blue. And I'm going to add water to my paintbrush right over here. Get a nice gray going. And now I'd say it's about time to paint. I'm going to clean my water out of my cup because it is quite dirty from mixing colors now. So we have some colors mixed up. Got my gray going. Let's add a little turquoise to it. Jazz it up. Okay. So with watercolor, you want to do the lightest colors first. So this is a very washed out, watered down color. A little purple there. And I like to mix different colors as I go into the wash to vary things up. Because remember, I'm not using black paint. So I can play around with other colors. I've got... Ooh. Just adding a lot of water as I apply my paint to the paper. My big wash. And I'm not worried about saving the whites of my paper because I also have some white gouache I can use. The paintbrush I'm using is a size 10 Princeton Neptune round brush. Get some more of my gray, bring it over here, and I can just spread it across the paper with my paintbrush. Not really worried about watering it down quite yet because it's still quite wet, so I can just move it around with my paintbrush. Look at that. And even paint where the shadows are that I sketched in. I'm going to drop some purple in over here. And some of this quinacridone rose. Rinse my brush, get some more water on the paper, move it around, blend it in a little bit with what's already on the paper. You can really play around with watercolors, honestly. You just have to do it. <clears throat> so this one on the right, this is Cole. He's drying up a little bit. So I want a little bit more ultramarine blue. The mixture is still a little too brown. I always give colors of blue an extra little stir. I find the pigments like to settle towards the bottom. Found out that it's because a lot of the pigment is made with like stones, like minerals and the pigment from stones and such. So this color I'm using is not a black color, but it's my own black that I make. It is the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So I'm just looking at my photo of where the dark shadows are and I'm just painting where the dark shadows are. I'm not worried about the in-between colors yet, so the mid-value colors. I'm 
these guys' coats in this photo are quite shiny. It was in summer, and they were both sunbathing. It was a beautiful day. And his front leg here is like tucked under his body. He was such a funny boy. His name is Cole. And we got him from my sister-in-law. They res She rescued both of the dogs. But um, Cole was a special boy. Pretty sure he was part husky or shepherd or something. Because when he shed... Oh boy, he really shed. I'm just adding some pure ultramarine blue to where the shadows are that I'm working on. Let's add some of this Quinn Rose too. The blue and this pink color are going to mix together and make like a purple. Really pretty. Really pretty colors. Rinse my brush. Wipe it on my paper towel a little bit. And let's go through and feather out a little bit. So I have a clean brush touching along the tip of the brush to the damp areas and that will help feather out the colors. Some of the areas have already dried, and the paper in this sketchbook is not 100% cotton, so it's going to react a lot differently than the other paper I normally use, which is fine. Sketchbooks are for practicing, and there's nothing better to practice than mixing colors and playing around with different colors. So I've made more purple with this, adding some ultramarine blue, and just adding it to the paper. And I added a little bit of my black mixture. Just going to move it around on the paper with my brush. I want to keep some of these highlights, so shiny light areas. Add some water to my brush. Let's get some more deeper purple going. There we go. And when I'm mixing dark colors, I do my best not to add any extra water because that would <clears throat> water it down and make it lighter in color. Get some of this turquoise in here. And watercolor is transparent, so you can totally layer colors on top of each other. You can wait till the layers dry or just go for it. So, right now, I'm just kind of go for it. Going for it. <laughs> go for it. Nah. So in the picture, our dogs are touching, and I thought that'd be really cute to have it right here. To really look to see where all the darkest, the darkest colors are. Especially on like the face it really helps create the structure of the face you can really see the bone structure of what you're painting playing around with the shadows
And there we go. Still pretty wet on his back haunch, so it's perfect for doing some soft colors, the wet on wet. Working on his pad of his paw here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then his ear. He had such funny little ears. They really did remind me of like a husky type of ear because they'll curl up into like a little rose looking thing. Get some more really dark, rich color going in here. Let's get some of that purple to his cheek over here. Try and look at it as not colors, but as values. So like how dark something is, is another way you can paint black type things. Some turquoise on his little snoot. An ear, the ultramarine blue right here. Now it's time to work on her. This is Kona. She is about 13 years old now. She's still kicking it. Still a happy girl, especially when it comes to mealtime. She's a classic lab. Give me all the food. She was also rescued by my sister-in-law too. And we got the dogs after they had to move out of their house because it wasn't fair to make them live in an apartment. They're big dogs. So we have them and they were very happy. Cole was very happy when he was here too. They were a little sad at first when we left their kids and everyone, the dogs were, but then they got used to everything. Now Kona is taking care of our daughter. Our daughter will be four soon. And she has grown up with this dog her entire life so far. And we couldn't have asked for a better dog. She's the best. When we go camping, she watches her to make sure that she stays close to the campsite or walks around with her. They play together, they snuggle. I'm doing more pink because Kona is a girl and I think it's more appropriate than to have Cole have a lot of pink in him. So I'm just really looking to where the shadows are. This pink is like kind of a lighter in value. And then her leg. The purple. I'm right handed, but yet I'm painting right to left. If I was smarter, I might have painted left to right that way. I wouldn't have to risk dragging my hand <laughs> in wet paint, but that's okay. Get some of my black mixture going along the back leg, where the shadow really is. Get some of this pink going in. Not too concerned about saving the white on her muzzle because I come I can come back with my white gouache if I need to. And let's get some of that turquoise in here too. Right where they touch too. That'd be cool. 
Oh, I know. Turquoise on her side. And let's get some pink on his head. Oh, they're touching. Just kind of dabbing up the excess paint. There's that turquoise on her side. But I don't want to overwork it. It's easy to overwork painting. Get some of that black going for her beautiful face. The photo I'm using is from my older phone. And I had like a filter on it where it made things kind of fuzzy. So, not like the best photo, but it works pretty well for a reference. Let's give her some pink along here. Dark blue. Let it kind of blend out on the page for a purple color. Tell right here there's too much water with it, so it's lighter in color, but that's okay. Just take my brush and kind of connect the areas where the lighter areas are. Um, that's still a little wet up there, so I'm gonna wait. Work on Cole's face a little bit more. Let's see. His face is still pretty damp, so I'm gonna get the excess water off my brush. Just touch the edges to let them bloom and flow onto the damp paper that I am creating. Let's add some of this gray to it. I haven't dried my paper at all just letting it dry naturally now let's work on some shadow some ultramarine blue over here get some burnt sienna that should be good and then just work on some shadow effects along here I do have one black in my palette at this time. It's Lunar Black by Daniel Smith, and it's a high granulating color, which is really pretty for the granulation. Um, but I will not be using it since that is not part of my challenge of painting black without black paint. So I'm just kind of working on some shadow. If it blends into his body, that's okay. Work on her shadow a little bit too. like her paw wasn't quite long enough over here so I'm just extending it a little bit work on his paw using the very tip of the hairs to show some fur textures I'm going to clean my brush, get excess water out of it, and then touch some of these areas to soften some edges and let colors flow around. This is kind of done by trial and error, though. Like, oh, is it going to work? Nope, that's okay. Or let's just add some more to it and make it work. 
He's just a little blue. Ain't you cool? Yeah. Let's mix some more of that nice dark color. Some ultramarine blue. And then some burnt sienna. Mm, a little on the brown side. Some more blue in there. And when I get my paint, I don't always rinse my brush, but when I'm getting my paint out of my pants, I'm really careful not to mix other colors in. Especially on the lighter colors, I definitely clean my brush with those because they're very easily contaminated. Just looking to see how his hair is on his back haunch. And her little toesies. And I can do a little wash, so like a light water down layer of my black color over this purple color and it'll make it even look more like a black really get it here under her head on her chest And then his little eyes. Let's get that really dark color going. Nice and dark. Hardly added any water to this mixture. I want to show where everything's really dark. Kona's eyes are actually closed in the photo. That's okay. I can make up some eyes for her. Now I'm not doing like exact super representational realistic painting. Just something fun. Expressive color. Painting a black two black dogs with expressive color. You'll get their essence their spirit, maybe even their personality. And then if you want to bring back some of the shine, you can lift the paint. So let's play around with that. So I just have a damp brush. I'm just touching it where I want the shine back. And I always make sure to transfer what paint it picks up from my brush, from the paper, onto my paper towel.
and it depends on the pigments or the color of paint that you use because some watercolor paint can be staining. So it won't lift off the paper all the way. Trying to illustrate him tucking his leg under is not as easy as one would think. Okay, Kona, your turn. She is a little bit more wet, so it's going to lift a little bit differently. But you can really see the first layer, especially if you paint a color and then another color on top of it, generally speaking, you'll see the first layer that you place down when you lift. You can also use like your paper towel to kind of soak up, dab up the paint. It's wet, but sometimes if you want to do it precisely, a good paintbrush can help you do that better. side of her face. Nope. Put some more dark paint in there. There we go. So this is how I would paint a black dog without using black paint. Um, just a little recap. I use some turquoise, Quinacridone Rose, Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of Cerulean Blue, Burnt Sienna. And then I mix them here and there to create these juicy, colorful, vibrant blacks for my Black Lab mixes. Thank you so much for coming along as I worked on this painting. If you have enjoyed it, please make sure to like this video. And if you are new here and want to see more videos about watercolor painting, please make sure to subscribe. And if you have a dog, I would love for you to leave a comment about your dog. What's your dog's name? What does he look like? You know, what breed are they? I would love to hear a little story about your dog. Well, thank you so much again for watching. I hope this has inspired you on your watercolor painting journey. And I will see you in the next video, which will actually be about how to tone down these vibrant colors and adding some white highlights. So stay tuned and check it out. I'll see you there.